you get ready all week and you know there's a reason that the franchise lives and dies with the quarterback yeah because you're the one out there you got the ball in your hand every single play like and it really has become more and more as as the game keeps progressing it's becoming more and more of a quarterback league and Darnold pressure steps away looking to run has room Darnold sprinting has a first down to midfield so both quarterbacks using their legs Darnold has a TD on the ground and that time he's got 14 yards and a first Every NFL player has their own personal strengths and their own personal weaknesses, with some being more glaring than others. Current Panthers quarterback Sam Darnold is no exception, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a deep dive into both Sam's strengths and Sam's weaknesses, and how we got from a former number 3 overall pick to being traded for a second round pick and change to a disappointment with the Carolina Panthers, ultimately leading them to select Matt Corral in the third round of the 2022 NFL Draft. Sam at times has shown flashes of becoming a very good NFL quarterback, and there are plays he makes where you think this guy has legitimate potential and could be a long-term starter and a good one at that, and then there's plays and throws Sam makes that leave you scratching your head and wondering what the f*** he was thinking. And there is a lot to dive into within this breakdown, so without further ado, let's begin. This was one of the most impressive plays of Sam's 2021 season with the Panthers, and when you break everything down, this is a play a Pro Bowl caliber quarterback makes. We will get to the bad plays from Darnold, but this was a 4th and 10 inside their own 5, with less than 2 minutes to play down 8 points against the Minnesota Vikings. The game is on the line here. If no play is made, the Vikings have the ball inside Carolina's 5 yard line, and it is effectively over. But Sam steps up in the pocket as Daniil Hunter is crashing in from the right side and throws a beautiful ball. Safety Harrison Smith thinks this is going to be on a line where he can easily step in front and intercept it, only for Sam to drop it in a bucket between Eric Hendricks and safety Xavier Woods. This is the type of play Sam Darnold believers use when referencing why he should start and be given chance after chance. This was by every metric a big time throw on 4th and 10, and for a team in Carolina who was 3-2 and two at the time and obviously didn't want to drop to 3-3, three and three, this this was a hell of a play by Darnold. It had everything, from evading a pro Bowl pass rusher to, to a degree, fooling a Hall of Fame caliber safety who took the cheese, and to dropping a ball in his receiver's arms with the game on the line over one of the best pass coverage linebackers in the NFL in Eric Hendricks. The Panthers eventually tied the game at 28 and sent it to overtime, but that obviously does not happen if not for this dime by Darnold. And for everything right in that play, here's a perfect example of what routinely goes wrong for Sam and why he has struggled so much at times at the NFL level. This ended up being an interception, and interceptions happen, but this one was entirely preventable, and this one was one of the most frustrating over the past two seasons with Darnold, as this was an entirely preventable mistake. DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson are running deep curls down the middle of the field, with two guys going to the flats and a back coming out of the backfield for a check down. This is a second and 13 in the third quarter with Carolina down 9 points with just 3 plays after their defense intercepted a pass from Jalen Hurts. What a perfect time to get back into the game. But Darnold inexplicably forces a pass to DJ Moore when he was blanketed by Darius Slay when Darnold threw the ball. No discredit to Darius Slay here is intentional, but Darius did his job and was right there. He's had to work a lot harder for other interceptions in his career, and what the most frustrating thing is, is how open the checkdown is. The checkdown, by the way, was former Broncos running back Royce Freeman, who some of you guys may remember, and would Royce have picked up the first down on second and 13 and gotten to the sticks? Unless he would have made a truly insane play? No. But that's fine, live to see another down, especially when your defense just helped you out in a big way by forcing a turnover, oh and by the way, giving you great field position in the process. If I'm making this video on Trevor Lawrence, a quarterback on a team who finished with the worst overall record in the league, who didn't have great weapons to work with in his rookie year, I understand it more than I do here. But we're talking about a fourth year quarterback forcing it to DJ Moore and again, a completely preventable situation. 
And for the people that say, well, Sam was ruined by the Jets, poor decisions like this, and this wasn't the only one from, forget the entire 2021 season, but against the Philadelphia Eagles, as Sam threw three interceptions in this game, and the Panthers ended up losing by three points. That's also not to say the entire game is on Darnold, but when your defense gives up just 21 points at home and your quarterback throws for 177 yards and three interceptions while having a passer rating of just 44.5, is pretty telling. With Sam, a lot of the time you'll see him take one, or hell, even two steps forward as a player, and then see him take four or five steps backwards the next series. And I wanted to review another interception within the Eagles game, because it's plays like this that, again, for the lack of better wording, just completely frustrates the shit out of you when watching Darnold tape. There was a lot that went wrong on this play, and one bad thing led to another. From the left tackle getting walked back essentially into Sam's lap, to Sam throwing another interception within the Eagles game, to DJ Moore getting his bell rung, or popped, or jacked up, or whichever term you prefer, to setting up the Eagles with the ball in Carolina's red zone. Look, I'm not here to nitpick and nitpick and nitpick Sam's game, but on a play like this when the pocket isn't just collapsing from one side and it's very much caving in, not just Sam, but quarterbacks have to have either a check down, which Sam did in the flat, or simply throw it where no when not even DJ Moore could get it and see another down. It's the little things that Sam consistently does not do, and that's a large reason why he was not great in 2021 and has had downright horrific moments in his NFL career. And these next few stats are a little more in-depth relative to the raw passing stats of Sam having 9 touchdowns to 13 interceptions during the 2021 season on just 59.9% completion percentage, which ranked 30th in the NFL ahead of just Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, and Zach Wilson. This next stat is from PFF, but under pressure, Sam had a completion percentage of 46.2%, which I realize sounds awful on the surface surface, and it ranked 25th in the NFL. However, Kirk Cousins, Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, and Aaron Rodgers finished with a worse completion percentage in 2021 under pressure than Sam Darnold. The big difference between the four of these players and Sam is all of them, not surprisingly, had a positive touchdown to interception ratio, with Sam having one of the worst in the entire NFL with just a 2 to 7 TD to INT ratio when under pressure. Sam was also under pressure more than all of the aforementioned quarterbacks at nearly 40%, but was far and away the worst, and there's a reason for that. Sam was also 5th in turnover-worthy play percentage, and what that statistic from PFF does is grade plays that have a high percent chance to be intercepted, or a poor job of taking care of the football and fumbling. So translation, if there's a pass right to a defensive back that is dropped and it hits him between the numbers, and you immediately hear the announcer say, well, that's a reason why he's a defensive back and not a receiver, that is a turnover-worthy play. And Sam was 5th in the entire NFL in turnover worthy play percentage with a rate of 7.9% behind only Mike Glennon who is not good, Big Ben in his final season, Jimmy G and Tua Tagovailoa. The bottom line here is whenever times get tough and the pocket is collapsing, Sam plays like a deer in headlights and has a lot of knee-jerk reactions and the tape consistently shows that. There's no doubt at times Sam plays like another quarterback from his class in Josh Allen and makes throws that wow you, and he fits them in and really fits a football through a mailbox at that, but then there's other times where you're wondering, you know, what the hell man, and in a lot of ways, he reminds me of Kirk Cousins where Kirk will throw for 300 yards and 4 touchdowns against the Packers and beat Green Bay, then follow it up with an absolute stinker of a game where the team puts up just 16 points at home and loses to Cooper Rush and the Dallas Cowboys. The only difference is Sam's highs aren't nearly as high as Kirk Cousins, and he plays far, far worse when the walls start to cave in. I understand to a degree where the Sam Darnold believers are coming from, and I understand wanting to believe in him, and as fans, we generally want to project the best for guys and think their future will be successful, as no one wants to think that they just drafted the next Jalen Reger ahead of Justin Jefferson, and especially with Sam because he is just now 25 years old. He's entering year number 5 in the NFL and is only a year and a day 
older than current Steelers rookie and first round pick Kenny Pickett. But for Sam's future, what I'd like to see happen and what I think the best possible outlook for him to have is a Ryan Tannehill type career revival. I don't think the Panthers are going to be anything of note this year, and especially with Matt Corral looming in the shadows, that will only add to it when Sam has a turnover in 2022. Now, will he have a Tannehill type career revival? Probably not, as that is much, much easier said than done, but if Sam does not play well in Carolina, like he hasn't thus far, and becomes a free agent, he will more than likely have to sign somewhere as a backup. And a reason why I think Sam can be successful in the league, which is different than saying I think he will for sure become a great player, is he has all the tools. It's just about putting them together and eliminating mistakes. And some of the mistakes he made in 2021 are in entirely coachable, and they're not that he doesn't have it or does not have the physical ability to make things happen. And with that being said, that's all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, now is the time I ask you to please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, as it would truly mean the world. This was a deep dive in, I spent a lot of time on this and had been working on it all week, and if this is something you would like to see more of in the future, please let me know. And until next time, as always, please be safe and have a great day. Love you guys.